Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and in this video, we're going to be having a look at a very interesting truck that I think really fits well into the world of SnowRunner and really suits the attitude of the game and the game world very, very well. Now, this is Fred Swain's Jeep Kaiser M715. Now, these trucks have a lot of history, and there is a really big cult following behind uh, these Jeep trucks. Now, there are a lot of really, really cool things that you can actually read about as far as the history of these trucks go. Um, but we're not going to dive too much into that. If you want to actually read about that yourself, you can. However, this video is mainly going to be about checking out all the customization features, testing it out, and seeing if it fits well within the environment of SnowRunner. Now, it's a really interesting mod, and also, I will have a link to it in the description box down below. And as of recording this video, uh, this mod is not on consoles at the moment, although it may or may not make its way there in the future. So let's go ahead and fire it up, get it into the garage, and uh, see what we can do to it. Gets off the line pretty quick, but it does lean a lot, although hopefully that bodes well for um, articulation on the trails and the obstacles. So let's see. Now, our base engine we start with is a 250 cubic inch AMC V8. We're going to go up to potentially a 350 cubic inch Buick V8, which is, I think it included a little bit of history here. Let's see. Kaiser Jeep switched to the Buick 350 in 67 ab after AMC discontinued the 327. That's interesting, uh, interesting info there. And then here, the top engine is the 327 AMC, which it says uh, that was sold to Kaiser Jeep from 65 to 67. Jeep named it the Vigilante V8. Interesting little tidbits of history in here. I loved how he's actually included these little tidbits in here like it was a original game truck rather than just kind of, you know, saying this is the base engine, the mid engine, and the top engine, you know? Now, gearbox wise, you have a couple of different gearbox options. You have a T85 Borg Warner, you have a T98 Borg Warner, and you have a GM TH400 with overdrive. So that's actually really interesting. Two technically quote unquote manual options and then an automatic option. Now, they don't really say which one is the, uh, the dedicated off-road one. I'm assuming, I, I don't know. We'll tr we'll try the T98 and then we'll go kind of from there. Uh, if that doesn't give us that great of like off-road range capacity, then we'll just switch it up and kind of play with it outside the garage in the virtual garage and just kind of see what we come up with. Now we have three different suspension options. We have default, we have lifted stiff, and we have lifted off-road. Soft suspension, off-road use. That's definitely what we're going to be going with. So we'll go with that. And then tire-wise, you start with a 39 uh, all-terrain, and you can go up to a 47, at least in the all-terrain category. So, and then you go straight to off-road, actually. Wow, I was going to say, I was like, oh, well, we'll have a couple more in the all-terrain category. But, like, no, you go straight to off-road. There's, like, there's not much that they play around with there. Whoa, what? What are these? 47-inch military tire, 43-inch military tire, and 39-inch military tire. I have never seen these before. And also, you have... Whoa, you have swampers. That's so sick. Okay, I'm actually, I think, gonna go with the 47-inch swampers. What's weird is I'm calling it swampers because he has them called boggers here. But, like, they look more like a swamper than a bogger. But if you want to get technical about it, I suppose we could talk about that in the comment section down below. Um, so we're going to go with these. I think they look really, really good. And as you can see, they've also been aired down. So they should have a really good footprint. And then, actually, I completely forgot to go through the winches. But let's see. Uh, offline, that's fine. And then snorkel-wise, you got, well, tall front facing is all you get. Now, frame add-ons, you have trunk repair supplies and you have small roof rack. I'm going to go with, well, we're going to look through the other options and then we'll come back and check that out. You got gas cans, you got a toolbox, you got a spare tire. That's sick. Okay, I'm going to do all of that because those are all really, really cool additions. You have the optional bumper, which, well, I don't know if I'm a fan of that or not. I kind of like it without it, actually. It looks a little bit cleaner without it. And then, well, truck rim is about the only wheel choice you get, bud. Now, you, you have the base color, which is all green. You have bright green with sort of a black top. You have kind of a black and white theme going on. You have this desert tan theme going on, all black and then red. And then this is kind of an odd one, the yellow and kind of an off maroon, off red, kind of weird. And then you also have, oh, this one down at the bottom doesn't change anything. It says it does. It's supposed to be kind of an orange, but it doesn't really change anything. I'm really digging this kind of desert tan idea. 
And obviously, well, actually, it looks like we can't do any kind of interior customization. All right, well, that's going to do it for the customization. So now, let's see what this uh, M715's got in it. That's definitely not the right gearbox choice. Let's see. Back into the garage. Let's try gearbox. Okay. Wow, default. All right, let's go back to off-road. Off there we go. Yep, that's going to work for me. Now, it is diff lock always on, all-wheel drive always on. And let's see. Ooh, you've got medium and scout trailers. So you can do, like, the lightweight scout trailers and the medium-duty trailers. I love that. God, you can really tell that this off-road suspension is designed to go down the trails and flex. Like, that's literally all it's designed to do. And I'm sure that with the grip levels this thing provides with these tires, it's going to go up just about whatever we can throw at it. Now, I do highly encourage you to go down into the description if you're on PC and download this truck for yourselves and check it out because I think it's really going to appeal to the old school crowd in the way that a lot of these old school vehicles and especially like full-size Jeeps haven't gotten, you know, that big of a showing in the SnowRunner mod community and I'm really glad that, you know, people in the community are giving these things some attention because they are very, very cool rigs. They have a lot of history and they can be built into very capable platforms. Let's see how it does climbing up this hill and high. Okay, so it, it had a little bit of difficulty near the top, but really good job overall. Wow, handbrake on and it just slides right back down. Yep, that's a... That's an old-school Jeep handbrake for you. But, and that's not, you know, that's not a jab at Jeep. I love Jeeps, but I'll tell you something. Not all the old-school Jeep um, parking brakes work all that well. Know that one from experience. Okay, let's see how she does in the mud. We're going to try it in the shallow mud first, in high. And these Super Swampers should be fairly decent out here, but what's interesting about them is, like, if you look at the tread, they look kind of like they've been worn down a little bit. They look a little bit worn out. And I kind of wish that the lugs on the tires were a little bit, a uh, little bit taller so they at least look like new tires. But that's, I know that's me being very picky, but like, it's just kind of one of those weird details that it, you wouldn't think it would matter, but it kind of does. And it may not matter to you. It, it kind of matters to me, not fully, but like, it's just kind of one of those weird little details that sort of kind of matters. But Let's see how she does in high. Yet again, seeming to be really, really good in the shallow mud and high range. I'm going to go into the medium mud now, and we'll see if that changes things up a little bit. I'm sure it will, but let's see how she do. A lot better than I expected it to, actually. All right, heading for the deep stuff now. Now, somebody did ask me in one of my recent test videos uh, why I don't ever go into the last pond, and the reason why I don't go into the last pond is because basically almost nothing can make it through there. That's a guaranteed get it stuck for just about everything. Now, if you have something like the monstrosity, obviously it'll drive through there, no problem. Uh, put it this way, that pond over there will almost completely swamp Monster Max. So if it'll com almost completely swamp Monster Max, there's really not much point in taking many other vehicles through there. Now, this thing, on the other hand, actually did extremely well through that mud section. Like, honestly a lot better than I thought it was gonna do and with that in mind I think I'm actually well first of all I think I'm actually gonna change up the weather because it's a little bit there we go I was gonna say it's a little bit a little bit dismal on the weather front right now I kind of want to have at least somewhat of a nice day now let's go ahead and hit the dips obstacle so once we run through the dips obstacle which I'm sure this thing is gonna monster that then we'll be off to the bridge jump where we're gonna attempt to make it all the way across and we will equip the highway box whoop, to get as much speed out of it as we can now something i do notice about the whoops in here well whoops more like dips because these are much deeper than your normal whoops this thing is uh is bouncy the, the rebound is a little weird like the the droop of the suspension is good but the rebound is a little like strange feeling and that's not again that's not a criticism of it i'm sure that the creator has it tuned to his personal liking and this thing makes it through here just fine although there are a little bit of like there are a couple little weird things going on with the suspension once you start to get it twisted up a little bit that i'm sure he'll iron out in the future but it does a really good job through there though i mean the wheelbase is very well suited to obstacle types like that the wheelbase makes it easy but let's go ahead and actually repair and refuel and now we are also going to go ahead and throw no throw the highway box in it 
and okay so that gets rid of the low ranges and it also um it gets rid of the low ranges and adds a fifth gear in automatic mode and wow it actually gets up and moves with the highway box that's a major change normally with a lot of these rigs it's not so much of a change when you put the highway box in it but this thing you can tell right off the bat and it gets up to fifth gear really quickly too really quickly especially with that s plus engine in it although i will tell you that it does feel pretty balanced i mean the power level definitely feels like it's in line with a fully upgraded scout from the base game it doesn't feel like you're driving some kind of you know hypercar uh, in snow runner but let's also make sure that I, once we get across the bridge jump if it survives the bridge jump i have one more obstacle that i really want to attempt with it but oh come on all right and let's go easy gets it done it's pretty quick actually all right go whoa okay it made it a good ways it's a little nose heavy but that's kind of what i expected i feel like you can't expect this thing to be anything other than nose heavy it's just like that's how it's gonna be and that's you know that's just kind of one of those things that you have to expect out of a jeep truck like this because again i mean look at where the big heavy engine is it's all the way up there on top of the front axle now before we finish the test that which by the way uh, aside from the nose heaviness really good showing from the bridge jump from this thing i really do think it, it did a great job let's go ahead and refresh the gearbox real quick change that time yet again to something that's you know not like dark and gloomy outside but let's head for this rock obstacle now i know that i've been doing this a lot in my recent tests but i figured that since we didn't really do a ton of rock testing it might be nice to kind of include that at the end of some of these tests so let's see how this thing does in terms of rock grip easy it's not necessarily the greatest right there but let me see what happens if i kind of hit it with a little bit of speed now granted whoa nah there's no momentum on that granted these rocks are the rocks that are really really slick and they don't really lend themselves well to any kind of rock crawling gameplay so yeah i'm just gonna pull the cable nice thing about it is you can do some like really quick winch catches with it and whoa du, du, du. oh my god dude okay don't think about catching yourself with the handbrake in this truck this thing's handbrake is awful i mean and that's not a bad mark on the truck that's just kind of something to be aware of oh we almost made it though we almost made it up that time maybe not necessarily all the way but almost made it up yeah oh my god it is like it is super slick on the rocks it just does not like rocks for whatever reason now it's probably that it doesn't like these rocks in particular because the standard in-game rocks are pretty slick for the most part you can get around it sometimes with tire coating but that only works so well but we'll have to see how it does on one of the trail riding maps that has the different rocks with updated rock traction so that'll be something for a future video or stream now if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions on it in the comments down below hit that like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you guys next time